So the first thing we're going to texture is the head, since we already have the UV map complete. So what I did was I've opened the head in ZBrush. So we have half closed eyes and a half open mouth. So when we break the normal maps and the radiosity, we don't get any wrinkles. So I've created a brand new max file where I've imported the high res head. I'll also import the low res. And now I'm going to use Polygon Cruncher to reduce the density of the head while keeping all the detail. As a general rule, I would avoid importing a mesh bigger than half a million polys into Max. Otherwise, you might run out of memory very easily. So I've optimized around 75 to 80%. And now I'm going to adapt the low poly mesh to the changes we have. So I'm going to close the eyes so it bakes everything correctly and I'm also going to relax the geometry since we had some pinching we saw previously around the mouth and in some areas below the neck so the geometry follows the line as much as possible. I'm also going to open the mouth. So I'll quickly select the bottom jaw. And just the same way I did it on ZBrush, I'll just rotate it slightly. So it's open enough to allow to match the high-res model. In this case, I've placed a dummy for the rotation. So later on, when I want to close the mouth again, I have a reference point that I know I can use if I select the lower jaw, and it will save me some time. And now, back to relaxing all the vertexes and faces, so we get a very nice and uniform division between all the edges. And once again focusing on the corners of the mouth that are always quite problematic because there's so many edges merging in one corner. And making sure that the loops of the nose actually correspond to the actual loops of the high res. Since you can see ZBrush pushed some of them. Also, turn any edge that you feel needs to be turned, like on the nose, there was one that was not facing the right direction. And here, just constrain to faces and relax the edges, so you get a nice distance. And then just go around the mesh and areas like the ears, where the silhouette would be very important, make sure the low res is matching the high res. And if required, go on and do some changes if you think those will be specific to this head and will be better for it. Also very important is to make sure that the main facial expression edge loops are matching the geometry correctly. So in this case for the brows, we have to move those polys around and the same for the lips so that the most extreme edges match the lips as much as possible and this will automatically transmit to the texture and to the normal maps so when animated there will be very very little distortion and once we're happy with the results we apply a symmetry and we'll go back to the UV map and fix any issues that it might have because of the changes in the geometry. The chin area was quite changed from what it was previously, so you will need quite a lot of changes in the UV map to match the new 
a new size. But since we already have quite a solid UV layout, it's mostly tweaking. There's no going from scratch and UV mapping the head. And the further we go into the project, the more reusable stuff we'll have, which will keep on saving us more and more time on every task we have to do. Once I'm happy with the results, I'll apply a symmetry modifier. I'll flip and I'll weld everything while keeping space for the eye that will be done later on. And then I'll start doing render to texture, making sure that the cage that I have fits the high res as well as possible. This part takes a little while, but it's quite important to get this as good as possible since all the maps will come from this cage. So after a few tweaks, here we have the final head where you can see the normal map and an AO pass applied. It did it quite a few tweaks. I've also already closed the eyes and the mouth to what will be the final position and apply the texture to the eyes. You can see that the geometry is well divided and separated. The loops are following the muscle groups and also I had to tweak the leaps to make sure the geometry is going to follow them precisely. And now once the head is done, we're going to apply the same process to the hands and then go to the rest of the body. Since the head and the hand are going to be used several times on the same model, I made a bit of the torso too, so whether he has a short shirt or a high shirt, we'll always have this amount of room to work with. You can also see it doesn't differ too much from the original head. If I hide it and then hide the original one, they are pretty close. Also, the lighting is a bit harsher because this is max lighting. And you can see here the final AO pass and the normal map pass. You'll also notice that I closed the eyes a bit more. After the first passes, I saw there was still some room. So now we've finished all the main parts that will be repeated throughout the project and I've placed them inside the original body mesh. So here we have the final arms, which I'm going to do some quick renders to show you the normal maps. So you can see here the normal map applied. I've got the final head and the final hairstyle. The rest of the torso is not worked on because so far we haven't, we didn't need to, to use it. So once we do, it will be worked on. So all the parts are ready, and they have been, they're going to be copied and placed into the model we're doing right now, which is the retro CD character. So this is the low res version of the character, and. We've placed the low res hands, we've cut them, and we've prepared a geometry so it blends correctly with the low res shirts. And same thing with the head, it's been cut, 